What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy, 103, just finished watching the match and Barcelona narrowly beat Hatafe at the Camp Nou in La Liga by a one goal to nil in the first game at home in 2023. The performance wasn't up to scratch, but good teams always win when they play poorly, three points clean sheet couldn't ask for anything more the starting lineup for this match is on the screen right now it was her staggered in goal a back four of roberto kunde christensen alejandro balde midfield three of busquets gavi and pedri and a front three of rafinha ansu fati and uzman dembele with eric garcia marcus alonso jordi alba and franck kessier making appearances off the bench the only goal in this match score for barcelona and the winning goal of course was scored by pedri it was actually against a run of play hatafi on the attack fantastic tackle from andreas christensen that finds rafinha on the left wing puts in a beautiful crossing ball to the running pedri he taps it past david soria in goal for Getafe and gives barcelona the lead and eventually the three points so overall the team performance rating on the night i'm gonna have to give it an average six out of ten i think i'm only giving it average because we got the three points in clean sheet if one of those was missing you're looking at a five maybe even a four I think in the first half there was some there was some you know fluidity in the Barcelona team. I think we started off the game well first ten minutes. Then Hatavi started getting a few chances. Borja Mayoral, um, Carlos Alenia, uh, and Una, they were all getting in behind. Even though there were some of them were offside, the majority of them, but they were still getting chances. Then we get a goal against the Red play. We looked comfortable. Second half. I think it was probably one of the worst halves we played this season. It was so dull, so boring. We were defending for the majority of it. The defense today had to put in a shift and a half. You could say, besides Pedri's goal, the only highlight from tonight was the fact that we presented the Catalonia Super Cup to the camp now, and also that Busquets was honored for 700 matches played for the Blaugrana. Other than Pedri's goal, that was probably the most exciting part of the night. It was great to hear the camp now singing Campeones, giving Busquets his recognition, the Solchena Chabi's name as well. Apart from that, though, the game was pretty dead. I don't remember, but like, there's not much key moments in the fact that Gavi was carrying us in the midfield. Ansu Fati was dreadful, Dembele was working his magic, and Ter Stegen was saving us in the back of the net. It's it happens sometimes when you're such a you know when you're a big team playing you know week in week out you know Wednesday Saturday Thursday Sunday just continuously play have to rotate and change. This sometimes happens. We see it with Man City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, PSG, Juventus, whatever the case may be. But it's always important when you're playing poorly that you still get the victory. The objective when you walk on the pitch. Is to walk away with three points. You can concede five goals, you can concede 20, you can play absolute crap, you can part the bus counterattack. The only thing that matters is you walk away with three points in your pocket, and we did that. And that's the main feeling that I'm leaving today. The clean sheet, honestly, was just a bonus. If you told me we went 2 1, I would have taken it. The three points, it's what matters most. But again, the performance, not up to scratch like we like to see at Barcelona. So overall, the team performance rating on the night, I'm going to be giving it a 6 out of 10. Let's now get into the players' individual player ratings there's gonna be some juicy ones of course we're gonna start with the goalkeeper mark andre thurstegen and my man of the match gets a nine out of ten from me any other goalkeeper in the world and net we are dropping points in this game whether a draw or a loss thurstegen was absolutely saving our arses in net just look at the first half alone Boya Mayoral threw on goal saves it offside Carlos Alinea threw on goal saves it offside Unal had an opportunity that wasn't fled for offside and he still still saved it second half he made some poor save as well Nightmare made the free kick boost gets in cuckoo land free header right to him he won us the game today 100% I don't know how boost gets was giving man the match by La Liga that's probably some sympathy for him playing a 700 game but Ter Stegen, world class, Mark Andre Ter Spider Man, my goalkeeper, man of the match, and he gets a 9 out of 10 from me. Now for the two center backs in front of him. Firstly, on the left hand side, it was Andreas Christensen, and I will be giving Christensen an 8 out of 10, despite the fact that he only played 45 minutes. With Christensen, I just feel so safe knowing that he's my center back. Like, the amount of aerial duels he won this game was ridiculous. The cutting edge passes, the last ditch tackles, and of course, he started the momentum and started that play for the goal that Pedri ended up scoring. What a signing he has been. I saw a report in the media this morning that people in Barcelona inside the club, like Mateo, Jordi, Juan, Rafael, whoever it may be, that they think that Christensen has been Barcelona's best summer signing ahead of Lewandowski, Koundé, Rafinha. 
they may be onto something because this man is absolutely unbelievable. Now, there are reports coming out saying that he was subbed at halftime because he had some discomfort in his left hamstring. Hopefully, he's fit for Sosa Dad. We'll probably get some more news later on today, if not tomorrow morning. I think he could be out for a week or two. If it's this, if it's discomfort, then hopefully he'll be probably be out for Sosa Dad. Maybe be back for Girona. But if it's an actual injury, I think he could be out for around two weeks. But hopefully, that's not the case. But tonight, Christensen, superb again, and he gets an 8 out of 10. From me now, center back partner, of course, on the right hand side, it was Jules Kunde, and I'll also be giving Kunde an eight out of ten tonight. Also played it right back for the last, uh, I think what, 15, uh, 10 minutes of the game. Superb from him as well. What a center back he is! Again, I've noticed about Kunde that his passing is not that great. Like, it's not Aruho crap, but it's not Eric Garcia good. You know what I mean? It's like kind of in the middle. He'll put some, he'll ping some great passes. The next minute he'll be sloppy. So I think he needs to work on that. But of course, in the defensive aspect of the game today, he was superb. The tackling, the reading of the game. There are a few moments when the ball was coming over to Stegen. He would block it, let Stegen pick it up, waste time. Uh, the headers away from goal, the last just tackles, you know, the connection play that he had with the Dembele when he was at right back, you know, making the overlapping runs was superb again. I think Kunde is just a fantastic defender, a fantastic center back, and even a good right back as well. And tonight he'll be getting an 8 out of 10 from me. Into the fullbacks now, we'll start with Sergio Roberto at the right back position. I'll be giving Roberto tonight a 6 out of 10 average score. I mean, did what he had to do, did not play poorly, was not fantastic. I think he was okay in the first half. He's making some good runs into the byline. He's making some overlapping runs for Dembele as well, or Rafinha, because they were swapping wins the majority of the game. Had a few poor touches near the uh, center circle as well, so I remember him giving the ball away a few times. I think second half, he grew into the game a bit more, but again, was more so defending like the rest of the team. But it's just average from him. He didn't see anything uh, perfect, didn't see anything great, didn't see anything poor, so average 6 out of 10 for the second captain of the club. Finally, at left back, of course, it was Alejandro Balde. I'll be giving Alejandro a 7 out of 10. Similar to Christensen, only played about 45, well, not about, only played 45 minutes. I think that 45 minutes, he played very well. He's making some fantastic runs down the left. I tell you what, man, the pace on this man is redonkulous. It's beyond imaginable how fast he is. I'm talking like, would he be Alfonso Davis in a race? Maybe. He is that quick. The, it was ridiculous. He would like... He'd do like a little tap run and he'd run past like four Getafe players. It was ridiculous. I think the connection play with the wingers wasn't up to scratch from Alejandro today, whether it was Rafinha or Usman Dembele. He had a bit of trouble reading what they were trying to do, but I think when he's connecting with uh, Pedri in the middle and Busquets, he had a better understanding. Same with Christensen as well, but I think he played very well. Hopefully, he's not injured. He was, of course, subbed off at halftime. But yeah, I think Balde played very well today, and for the 45 minutes that he played, I'll be giving him a 7 out of 10. Into the midfield now, firstly, El Capitano Sergio Busquets in the pivot. I'll be giving Busi tonight a 6 out of 10. I think it was average. I didn't think he played fantastically well. didn't think he played poorly. There were some moments where he gave the ball away uh, quite a bit. There were also some moments he had some fantastic passes, some fantastic tackles as well. Typical Busi performance. I'm not going to dwell on this too much. I don't think he had... Enough to be named a man that matched by La Liga in this game. I don't know how he's done that, but I think he was, you know, fairly average. Had some, uh, you know, ay 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 moments, but had some huh, good moments as well. So I will give Busquets tonight a 6 out of 10. Next up is, of course, Gavi, and I'll be giving Gavi tonight an 8 out of 10. You could say he probably performed a 7, but I'm giving an 8 on the simple fact of his aggression and passion on the pitch. I mean, oh my god. When he when, when Chavi was bringing on Kessier... I didn't know that he was going to go to a forward in midfield. So I'm thinking, okay, he's going to take off Busquets. I mean, he's going to take off Pedri or Gavi. Sure, it's going to be one of them too. And I said, I would take off Gavi. You know, he, I, you, I mean, I would take off Pedri. Because you cannot take off Gavi in a game like this where you're facing a team with a low block who are trying to, you know, hit you on the counterattack. You need to have some sort of aggression, some sort of, you know, fight or bite in the midfield. And Gavi gives you that. And that's the reason, I think, why he kind of nullified Getafe in, making, in creating more chances. I think Gavi tonight was fantastic again. How this man does this week in, week out is beyond me. And also, without his boots tied as well, is absolutely crazy. Gavi was absolutely world-class tonight, in my opinion. And he'll be getting an 8 out of 10. And final midfielder, of course, was Pedri. I'll be giving Pedri a 7 out of 10. I probably would give him a 7, even if he didn't score the goal. But I think the 7 with the goal, you could say 7.5. I think... In the first half, when we were controlling the game for the majority of it, I think he connected very well. He had a few sloppy passes in that first half as well, but second half, we're defending most of the, the half. You could say he was not really non-existent, but 
nullified. Like he had a few uh, good tackles. I do remember near the end of the uh, near the end of the game when he was with them belly down that right hand side near our penalty box. But apart from that, he didn't really you know make any darting runs. He every time he got the ball, he always passed it back. Didn't make any four progressive passes in that second half, in my opinion. But hey, that's how, just how the game developed. I'm not really you know blaming him for it. I think he did play well in the night, and I will be giving Pedri a seven out of ten. Into the forwards now, we're off with Rafinha at the right slash left wing in this match. I will be giving Rafi tonight a 6 out of 10. Even with the assist, I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. I think, again, he's just having difficulties going into the game. I feel like he performs better away than he does at home as well. Like, it's, it's strange with Rafinha. I, I think what he needs is he needs to be playing a team that's not on the low block and he needs to have the full starting 11 uh, behind him to play a good game. I think when you're making rotation, you're playing against a low block, Rafinha just looks like there's nowhere to go. Of course, he had the assist for the goal, credit to him, it was a fantastic pass, fantastic moment, great uh, weight on the pass as well, but I feel like he's missing something. I don't know, it's not like Rafinha, it's not like for, for poor where he's like lost confidence and stuff like that, but again, he's not, still hasn't played a full 90 minutes for Barcelona yet, got chopped off, of course, at the arrow mark for Kessier, but something's other Rafinha, I don't know what it is, but I think he, maybe he needs more trust, more game time, you could say, to get used to the system, but I think tonight he just, besides from the assist, I don't think he was that great, so I would be giving him a 6 out of 10, but the other right wing slash left wing was, of course, Ousmane Dembele, and I would be giving Ousmane Dembele a 8 out of 10, my god, how good he was tonight, I think, lost the ball quite a bit, um, but I, his passing tonight as well wasn't that great, but what I want to see from Dembele is he picked up the ball, drive, attack the defense, made them work, made them sweat, nutmegs, dribble, speed, whatever the case may be, and he did that today. When he was on the left-hand side for that first, I think, what, 25 minutes, he was running rings around Getafe. Also, in the second half, making some great runs, he was holding up the ball very well. I think he played very, very well, despite the fact he didn't get on the score sheet or get an assist. I think he's probably one of our best outfield players alongside Gavi and uh, Christian and Kunde at the back. That's why... I I mean, well, that's why I gave them all eight, but you know what I mean. I think he's like one of the few players out on the like from the outfield, besides from Ter Stegen, of course, that actually put in a performance that actually showed that they were fighting for the badge. I think he played very well, made some great runs as well. So we'll be giving Usman a eight out of ten. And last but not the least is Ansumano Fati. I'm gonna be giving Fati tonight a four out of ten. Oh. <laughs> I think that was the worst performance I've seen from Ansu Fati the worst I, I don't think he had a shot I think he had about 10 touch of the ball six of them were passes that were misplaced he was dreadful absolutely dreadful how he managed to scruff playing 90 minutes is beyond me he needs to wake up I, I tweeted before the game this is the moment for Ansu Fati to perform people were saying oh Ansu Fati is gonna score two goals oh I'm thinking he's gonna score a hat trick he was, he was dreadful. I, I, it's it's come to the point where Ansu Fati, where it's similar to Rafinha, he needs to play with the full starting 11 behind him, and he needs to be playing on the left. I think as a striker, Ferran is better. We could even say, I think even at this point, you can say he's trying trying Rafinha or Dembele, because I think as a striker, Ansu Fati, I guess maybe a, a low block like a Tafe, is just, it just doesn't work. And he was nullified in the match throughout the entire game. There were moments where he could have got, like, there were moments where I'm just like, shoot the ball like he, in the first half there was a cut back from gabby it was a bit behind him but at least you know try to like hit that on target straight away on the one time didn't do it and i remember the second half he was coming in the left cuts inside i'm like all right get this on target shoot this freaking sends it to rosette man it's <sighs> he needs to watch out because again we have a 15 million buy option for carrasco and if you know offers coming for ansu it's I don't know, I don't know, but he needs to shape up, I think people are saying, I've seen a lot of people saying on Twitter in my live chat as well, that he's better as a super sub, which I think, you know, what is looking likely, if he can't perform in a low block against Getafe, when else are we going to use him? Not a good deal, the office of Ansu, Ansu Fati, but hopefully he can bounce back from this, but tonight I'm going to be giving Ansu a 4 out of 10. Now for the substitutions, the subs were Eric Garcia, Jordi Alba, Franck Kessier, and Marcus Alonso. I'll give Franck and Alonso both six. They only came on for a little bit. I think I think Franck came on for a half an hour. Alonso came on for about 15 minutes. Alonso had a great tackle near the dime moments of the game, so credit to him. I think Franck Kessier did play well uh, when, he, when we were defending for the last few uh, minutes. He was getting some great tackles, getting great interception, was tackling from behind. Jordi Alba, a bit average from him. I think Eric Garcia... 
also you could say average from him but did have a good clearance i do remember a good header away good tackle so and the subs came in did what they had to do no real huge impact but all put in a good performance i'll give all the substitutions tonight a six out of ten and last but not the least is of course the manager chavi hernandez who tonight i'll be giving a seven out of ten i mean three points clean sheet he did what he had to do performance wasn't the great of course it was very very poor i also think that Chavi's selection and substitution choices as well are tonight anyways were a bit iffy firstly i would want you to use your fifth substitution either give pablo Torre a few minutes and a a few minutes as well i'm surprised they didn't take off ansu fati i think for the starting lineup it was you know based on the discovery that we did have and how important this game was it was fairly decent but i think the game management of Chavi again is showing today how when you see your team, I mean, he did bring on Kessier to go to a, a, a four midfield, which was, you know, very proactive. But you look at the last 10 minutes, you have another substitution left. Why not run the clock, bring on some fresh legs, you know, anything really. But again, I think it's depend. It's on. It's more on the fact that the players tonight weren't up to No, weren't up to it, but had an off day, let's be honest. So I think Xavi could walk away with his head held high tonight, did what he had to do. He made, the right, uh, made some good subs, made some rotation as well, got the three points and clean sheet. No real complaints, but tonight Xavi will be getting a 7 out of 10 from me. So that was a match review for Barcelona versus Getafe in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to first see, of course, is your thoughts on the performance, your player ratings, and your manager rating as well. And of course, Make sure you go subscribe down below as well if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.